Hello. I remember the doubt that could lead to hopelessness when I began a path of alternative healing some decade ago. Thinking, how can I avoid taking things on which is going to lead to me being sick and diseased? How can I avoid having to go to hospital or having to go to the doctor? What's the main thing I need to do? I'm a smoker. I smoked. I thought I could give up smoking. I thought I could exercise more and I thought I can eat better. And the doubt came along when you're looking into things you find something new that's bad for you they put fluoride in this and that and if you have that you won't be able to do this and antibiotics avoid antibiotics they give the animals antibiotics and they're fed antibiotics and then if you eat meat you get the antibiotics it gets to a point where you just think there's just such a minefield, everything is bad for you. Well, that isn't true. The doubt of thinking that you can't avoid it, you can't get away from it, how you can be healthy. So, okay, I did what I did. I continued to smoke, and I still smoke to this day. But I did cut out fluoride. I felt serious about fluoride. Then I found out fluoride is in tea, but that's natural fluoride. They don't extract fluoride from tea and put it in your toothpaste. The fluoride comes from factories producing phosphates, not phosphorus, that they put in Coca-Cola and they put in um, fertilizers to make the plants grow. That fluoride is what's put in the toothpaste and tap water and table salt in Europe. That is the fluoride that I wanted to avoid and I've done it by not brushing my teeth and as you can see it's shocking puts most people off me but I've continued not to have fluoride and okay now and then I brush my teeth with uh, nothing on at all I also don't drink tap water well I use a little bit of tap water mainly during the summer because that's when the rainwater in my water butts that I collect off the roof um, can get a little warm and um, <laughs> could you know be a bit dodgy so I put a bit of tap water in too because I know there's chlorine in the tap water and that's something else I really try to avoid as well chlorine and um, I, it also does matter the water that comes into contact with you. So obviously I wash my hands on the tap. You know, I use the tap for that. But I get off quick. My baths. I have one bath a week most of the time. Uh, don't usually let it go longer than that. Occasionally I'll have a shower mid through the week, but that's actually quite rare. And when I have a bath, these days I just put in five litres of rainwater. Because I prefer, I used to do half and half, but I haven't got enough rainwater. Because I use the rainwater for other things as well. Um, so that is something that I've been, do you know what I mean? That, to me, I suppose everybody has to go with their own feelings. And for me, that was, that was the big one. Fluoride, don't want that. 
calcifying my pineal gland. And also because when I found out about this, I guess it was about 10 years ago, I'd already taken loads on, you know, I'd brush my teeth like a good boy and stuff like that. Anyway, that was something that was important to me to cut out and see the long-term effects. It did seem to have some quite early on effects, some very soon effects. Yeah, it made me feel better. Um, but obviously it is more of a long-term thing and I will tell you that my pineal gland is not calcified now. It's something I've been working on during meditation. I've been, it's been, I often am feeling quite a strong feeling in that part of my head. Actually when I'm connecting up my full hormonal endocrine system, all my endocrine organs are connected and firing up. And obviously the pineal gland is an essential part of that. If I had given up on this uh, keeping fluoride away from myself, if I had, you know, if I'd given into it and thought, well, no, it's more important that I've got clean white teeth, so I can give everybody a big smile. Maybe I wouldn't be able to do what I can do now. So for me, I'm very glad. And the chlorine is another thing. I just, oh, I hate chlorine. I really hate it. And I feel that. When I hate something like that, it's the the bacteria that live within me who are saying, you know, you don't like this. And if something gets in through my mouth and into my stomach, it's, you know, it doesn't like it. So I try and avoid it as much as possible. Um, so I also allow bacteria to flour flourish quite a bit and I quite like it you know if I get muddy and stuff that feels good it gives me a good feeling to get muddy <laughs> so I, I'm sort of you know I'm I'm learning more and more to hear what my body is saying and so far you know my body hasn't been on at me too much to quit fags but cut down I've cut down the amount of tobacco I smoke. My body really loves it when I smoke cannabis and doesn't seem to be wanting me to stop cannabis. It is quite fussy about <laughs> what cannabis I have and definitely hates the leaf, although sometimes it's necessary. And, um, you know, it loves the bud and it loves good bud. And um, the bud isn't always great. So anyway, I'm learning to listen to my body, and the more the more I've allowed it, the louder the body speaks. So it's more obvious. So don't allow doubts, thinking you can't avoid these things. You might think I've taken quite extreme methods. They're not that extreme. And I definitely recommend you try. Try things. Um, we really can be our own best doctors. You know, we really shouldn't need somebody to uh, come along and look at us and poke us and say, oh, you've got some blah, 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 disease. <laughs> it's a rare genetic thing. <laughs> and you need to, um, you know, we need to cut your kidney out or something. Or inject you with um, poisons and see what that does. Or take these pills for the rest of your life. You've lost your power then, you, you've you lost the power to become your own doctor, you're now dependent on them. And so, injecting yourself with something, 
that you don't fully know what it is and nobody does and they really seem to want to not have the argument, not have the debate, not allow a debate. Any dissenting voices about the vaccine are silenced. It should tell you something. But we will see, because now lots and lots of people are being vaccinated. And some people are having very bad side effects. And from what I know about the vaccine, you know, they inject a protein which then creates an immune response. And it's that immune response that sort of... Well, the, the vi No, sorry, they inject a protein which then grows into a virus, an RNA, which then invokes a mu an immune response. And... Um, so as lots of people are having the injection and having no response particularly, that could suggest that their immune systems just aren't just aren't doing anything, um, either because they're very old or because they've been dependent on or they've been taking immune suppressant drugs maybe, which there are lots. Or their thymus is completely... Uh, destroyed as it is with many people as it's the thymus that takes the building blocks the t-cells and things from the bone marrow goes to the thymus to be assembled so if it's not being assembled it's not going to be doing anything so it's why I'm concerned for the younger people being pressured to have the vaccine for really no Certainly not the reason protect them against COVID. Some sort of fangled idea about if we all have the vaccine that will make the vulnerable people safer to go out. Even though you still spread the virus when you have the vaccine. There's none of this is making sense. I mean, not what I'm saying. I hope what I'm saying is making sense. But as none of the reactions to this fake pandemic are making sense that also also should tell you something so they won't have the debate what they are saying doesn't add up and what's happening in hospitals since the vaccine rollout is absolutely pointing towards this not being a safe vaccine all these things should add up and we've been given a brain for a reason. Use it. Make your own mind up and take power over your own body. It is your body. It is your life. Look at the results of our health today in the modern world. Are we a healthy nation? Take the UK. Got a very modern health service. How many people are suffering with autoimmune diseases? I bet you know some people who can't eat wheat. They're celiacs. They can't eat it, gives them too much pain. There's Crohn's disease. I've heard quite a few people with that. I think, I think that's related to irritable bowel syndrome. I had irritable bowel syndrome most of my 20s I think or at least my late 20s that was the first thing I did was stop white sugar uh, with because of the bleach and it sorted out it sorted my problem out now why couldn't uh, why couldn't I have gone along to a doctor and the doctor told me that to cut out white sugar to have brown sugar instead because that hasn't been bleached. Again, the criminal is a chemical. And this is what I've been adding up, making sense of. Fluoride, chlorine. What was the one I just said? <laughs> Bleach. 
you know, if you're bleaching sugar to make it white, some of that bleach makes it through into the sugar. And we're putting that in our bodies. Bleach just kills everything. So again, chemicals kill our good bacteria. Okay, the fluoride is a bit of a special one, does something else. If it links with aluminium, it can pass the blood-brain barrier and for some reason is attracted to the pineal gland. It goes there and calcifies it. People have calcified pineal glands. Again, it's another one of the organs of the endocrine system, like the thymus, that isn't operating. It was there operating as you were a baby and a child, and it got better and better until you were like 14, 15, and then it's just one long, continual downhill slope because of the, because of the world we live in because of the environment we live in. If you look at the, the on the UK column, they, they've, it's actually a, a proper, from a proper website, covid19.healthreport.org. Uh, Sorry, I, I've forgotten what the name of the website, but it's from the UK column. They showed it. So they've done a graph of... Um, deaths in the tens of thousands for each country and there's a line and the red line is um, deaths before the vaccine rollout and then there's a blue line deaths after the vaccine rollout and then there's a dotted red line what was the projected deaths what it should have looked like okay for every single country now, well over half those countries, as soon as the vaccine rollout began, deaths surged up. I mean, surged. For some of them, kind of stayed with the projected line, not that different, but we don't know how many vaccines were given. That's what I'm saying. These are the Western countries that had loads of vaccines, had the biggest steep in increase. And you, and you see it towards the end of the graph, some of them who are really getting on with the vaccine rollout now, their deaths are now surging. What was I going to say? I can't remember. I might have to edit. <laughs> Definitely, we'll have to edit. I'll sod it, no one's going to watch it anyway. Um, editing is such a pain. Add hours, even just to... Oh, this is, I think this is the enemy. <laughs> I think, oh yes, I was. I remember now. I was talking about the um, the hormonal system, the endocrine system, wasn't I? Now chemicals. Chemicals kill the bacteria. Our endocrine system is under attack. I mean, I've said all that before. It's... There's no reason for you to want to have the vaccine. I mean, the, the virus has been out for over a year. If you haven't had it by you now, you know, where have you been hiding and what have you been eating? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's possible you could have, you know, if you're one of these very vulnerable people. You know, it's not like I've got anything against vulnerable people. I'm just for all people. And if the vast majority 
don't need something, then they shouldn't have it. And to be pressured into it like this, like I say, with everything not making sense, you've got to be sceptical about the world we live in. And when you have got a working endocrine system, it's much easier to feel out what's true. So if I'm prepared to go around with brown teeth, because I really don't want any fluoride, I'm not in the habit of brushing my teeth, there's no way I'm going to let them inject something inside of me and as I've got a good immune system it's I'm thinking it's highly likely I'm gonna have a strong reaction I don't want their fake shit in me was I talking about autoimmune disorders I but they are they are caused Again, by, well, the bleach in the sugar for me, that sorted out my IBS. Okay, that's not Crohn's disease. So when the, um, what an autoimmune disorder is, is the immune system is attacking a protein. And uh, this protein is sticking around. It's not getting rid of it. It's in the, it's in the blood and... Like so, so with celiacs, they they can't eat any more wheat because they've already got this wheat protein in their systems and it's not getting broken down. Now, who's to say that wasn't caused by some sort of vaccine? Because if the vaccine is training the immune system to dislike a certain thing, and I've said before, you can't train the immune system to like something. You can only train the immune system to dislike something. So you disguise something good, trick the immune system into thinking it's the enemy, and the immune system will attack it until the immune system gets reset. And there's only one thing I've heard of that can reset your immune system, and that's by getting measles. Interesting. I think it's really fascinating I mean I've learnt a lot is it, and it is you know you can't I couldn't I wouldn't probably even be able to just make a really long video and say everything I've learnt I, you know what I mean I wouldn't remember everything in one go <clears throat> but my you know my understanding is not just um, oh these words and this is bad for you and this is good for you, it's actually played out in practice. Like I said earlier, you know, if I get some mud on me, and it actually feels good. Something's saying, oh, I like that. I like a bit of mud. And if I smell strong chlorine or, um, you know, sometimes I'm having a bath, you know, because most of the water I'm putting in there has got chlorine in it. I don't feel great from it. I would much rather have a fully heated up rainwater bath. I mean, I put oils in and stuff, try to make it as pleasant as possible. And that helps. Get good quality oils. The right ones. There's this new one called Raven's something. And it's similar to tea tree, but it's nicer from Madagascar. Really cool. So my main part of this video was to try and reassure people who are trying to uh, avoid anything that is bad for them. Not to doubt that it's possible. It is possible. You go for the big ones first. Oh, yeah, alcohol. I haven't had a drop of alcohol now for uh, getting on for a couple of years, maybe. 
maybe getting to it won't be it's not a couple of years yet anyway because again that was something that I was finding that I was only having it like a couple of times a year you know if I was out or something a few beers but it was it was um, screwing up my meditation for days after I just do you know what I mean I wasn't I just knew you know, I wasn't able to and plus it it didn't wasn't my body wasn't saying it liked it and that isn't you know you can it doesn't mean that it happens for you you could love alcohol alcohol could be your thing you know red wine you could love red wine you just love it you know maybe you drank it a bit too much sometimes it's not that great for you right there could be a situation where you're fine with it you know perhaps you were never going to open up the other chakras anyway so it didn't matter that red wine was blocking one of your chakras do you know what I mean but then you know if you were to go on a path of giving up all the other shit red wine could at some point then be your block and maybe for me maybe one day cannabis will be my block kind of just got to deal with where you are now and where you want to go and um, I'm just here trying to tell you that it's very possible it works you might have to sacrifice some things what's important to you like I said these vaccines you don't know what the effect is going to be if you're young you've got your whole life ahead of you you don't know what you might be putting into you that you can't undo, you can't take it out afterwards. It's too late anyway. Do you know what I mean? That, that making the case for the vaccines, it's just it's got to the point of ridiculous, way beyond that, gone way beyond ridiculous. It's like a Hitler lie. This is like a Hitler lie. It's just gone to the stupidest. And I mean, I was sort of a bit of a row with my family earlier today on WhatsApp. It's just. What can you do? Different points of views. I recommend you take your health into your own hands. It's your body, it's your life. Don't let them jab you, because it's bypassing all your defences. You can't take it out, you can't undo it. Maybe if you've got measles, reset. But, you know, they just want to vaccinate against measles. That would be interesting. Well, they do, don't they? There is a vaccine for measles. I'm going to look into that, see what's in it. All right, ciao for now. Bye.